once we decided to go cruising, that's when the real work began. In this episode, we're gonna talk through what that looked like. It's fast, it's safe, it's large. It was a paperwork documentation nightmare. It actually would have been easier if they were all jerks about it. And they just said, yeah, oh, screw okay. you guys, but. Hi, I'm Zach, this is my wife, Caitlin, and our friend, Crystal. Our past adventures together and desire to spend more time living in the moment inspired us to embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Despite having two young kids and being novice sailors, we said goodbye to corporate America, sold just about everything, and moved on to a sailboat. Like and subscribe to follow along with us as we discover whether or not we are crazy to sail with our young family in a foreign country on a tiny boat. The first thing was, we didn't know if our families were gonna be supportive of this. It's a big decision. It was really uh, something that we'd only kicked around as a theoretical possibility, kind of a bucket list item. So we weren't really sure how they were gonna take it. Uh, we didn't have a boat. That's a big problem. You need a boat if you're gonna go on a cruising adventure and that is a big process. We didn't have a lot of documentation that we needed. Uh, Crystal didn't even have her passport. So we had to go through and do that. We had to renew all of ours. What about COVID? Huge topic. Um, we didn't know what was gonna be open. Things were still very much in flux, they still are. And so that was a huge factor that we had to take into account when planning all of this. Um, what about all of our stuff? What can we keep? How do we get rid of it? Um, and not just you and me, also a friend and kids. So growing kids. <laughs> yeah, a lot of planning around what stuff we were gonna to have to keep and bring and how do we even get it down there is a huge other question when we figure out where the boat's gonna be. And that's another thing to figure out was where do we wanna go cruising? Um, looking at, uh, Kate was pregnant, so what about having a newborn that was... <laughs> <laughs> looking at Kate that was pregnant. Yes. <laughs> I got pregnant, so we had to factor that in and figure out where I was going to have the baby, where were we going to go on the boat before that, after that, what are the logistics there? Yeah, lots to plan for when you account for a newborn. So the first thing we really had to nail down was where did we want to sail with COVID being you know, a big factor in all of those decision-making um, points. We really had to figure out what was open, uh, what made sense for us. And there was a lot of different factors that we wanted to account for. Um, we're, not, we're not expert sailors. You'll come to find that out soon enough, I'm sure. Um, but we wanted to have an area that we could sail that we felt comfortable in, but still you know, stretch of our skills. Um, and so that limited certain areas. We weren't gonna go down around you know, South Africa as our first place to go. So there's, that was one of the factors that we looked at. Another was going to be, um, where can we go that's going to have good weather? You know, generally we're, as you can probably see behind us, we live in a place where it's rainy and cloudy a lot. And so if we're going to uproot our whole lives. We wanted some sunshine, we're sunshine people. So um, other things we're looking at were costs. Uh, what kind of costs are there to um, be when it comes to checking in, checking out, uh, food availability, just all the different uh, costs that go into this cruising. We wanted to make sure that we had an area that made sense where we could maximize our budget. Some areas of the world are just more expensive from what we've seen. And so those kind of checked off a few areas where maybe we crossed those off the list early because they were just a very expensive place to go. That really narrowed things down to a few regions of the world. Well, and really ideally somewhere that was closer to our family if possible, because we have two young kids that have grandparents that love them to death. And so trying to stay kind of close to where we're from and also be able to come back and visit and have people come visit us and not have it be ha traveling halfway around the world. Yeah, that was a, that was a big factor because you know our kids love their grandparents and vice versa, and that's probably the hardest thing uh, when it comes to making this decision to go abroad on a sailing trip is being away from family, especially at such a young age where they love being around each other and building those relationships. Mm -hmm. So thinking about all those different things, um, and there's more to it, you know, language and the rest of it, we really settled on um, a couple different possibilities. It was looking more like either like the Caribbean, Florida area, or Mexico. And given those kind of narrowed down options, they were both close enough, they had good weather, um, they were good cruising grounds where people can, you know, cruise safely with growing experience. Um, there were other things then that kind of shifted our decision, and one of the biggest ones was cost and, um, openness around the COVID question mark. Um, there was an article that um, Bian of Sailing Totem wrote um, about the differences in their experience between sailing in those two areas. And that was really influential in um, 
you know, factoring into the, our decision. And so we settled on Mexico as our cruising ground on the Sea of Cortez um, on the Pacific side. So uh, that is where we decided we were going to go for it. And that was really helpful in being able to frame the rest of our adventure and plan for it. Once we decided on that, then it was a matter of breaking it to family and telling them what our plans were. I wasn't even sure we were gonna do this yet. And then you and I were just like, okay, mom and dad, what if we, uproot everything and go get a boat and live in Mexico with our babies and... I'm subtle that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just like, okay, but they're used to you kind of having harebrained ideas and throwing them out there, so... They work out most of the time. Yeah. There's an impression of what the cruising lifestyle looks like for people who haven't investigated it, where, you know, you're out at sea and it looks like some sort of pirate adventure all the time and there's hurricanes and octopuses and weird stuff happening. Yeah, I think um, a lot of our family didn't know exactly what it was going to be like. And we don't either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so uh, being able to show them some of the sailing vlogs we've been watching, talk through some of what safety looks like on the boat, and even just the conditions and, you know, explaining to them like where we were going to be and we weren't going to be doing massive ocean crossings to start things off with. And I think that helped settle some of the nerves. And it was hard because having just moved back to this area relatively recently, it was kind of like, yeah. hi, we're going to be here. Uh, actually, we're going to go completely uproot ourselves and go on this wild adventure. Get super attached to your grandkid. <laughs> Overall, everybody took it really well, and I have to say, like, it wasn't the decision-making factor. If people were opposed to it, like, that's that's kind of on them. We were going to do what we needed to do and what we wanted to do. Um, but it makes such a big difference to have so much family behind us and supportive of us because, um, you know, it just you want those relationships to be well and everybody's cheering us on and that makes such a huge difference for um, the peace that we have going into this. I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do to leave is to leave family. Yeah, it actually would have been easier if they were all jerks about it. And they just said, yeah, like, oh, screw okay. you guys. But you know, then it would have been like, okay, I guess this is a little bit easier to go. But now everybody was so nice to us and so now it makes it hard to leave. So no. come on guys. So we narrowed down where we wanted to go. We uh, broke the news to our family and got their support. And really at that point, um, it was a matter of finding the boat. We needed something to sail on and having found the area that we wanted to focus on to begin with, that really narrowed down kind of our boat hunt to like the Pacific coast, pretty much up and down America, all the way down into Mexico. And so that was the range that we were looking at. Um, and so I had been looking and everybody who is interested in doing this at some day has been looking for boats for a long time. So I kind of had a sense of what was available out there, um, having been just kind of casually browsing for a year or so or more. Um, but really it became a much more intense search at that point. But in the meantime, while I was looking for boats, while we were pitching ideas and trying to decide what kind of boat we were looking for for our needs, which is a whole different topic that could be like a series of videos on its own. Um, once we kind of began that process, we really knew that we needed to downsize because no matter what boat we got, we had to sell a ton of stuff and get rid of most of our belongings. So that was a whole other process. And she did a great job sorting through that and kind of getting us ready for it. Trying, yeah, I feel like for a long time now, I've lived out of moving boxes and we've just been, oh, this will come on the boat. This might come on the boat. This won't. And yeah, just like stuff has been really a challenge. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, some of it was expensive. We had a storage unit from having moved back and forth across the state a couple times. And so first thing was like, get rid of that and get rid of enough stuff that we didn't have to keep paying a monthly fee to store it that we weren't ultimately going to be using. And so we spent several long days going through all of our stuff, selling it where we could, just getting rid of it and donating it when we, you know, weren't able to take the time to sell it. And having done so, you know, we really got down to a pretty minimal set of belongings, um, which has been really actually kind of free. And it's a little bit of a, I don't know, uplifting process when you're not as tied down by some of what. If anybody own. knows of any minimalists or people with minimalist resources that also have kids, please send me these resources. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Kids change the equation a lot. Yeah, they require a lot of things. <laughs> Toys and clothes they're gonna grow into. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so as we were selling things down, um, you know, Kate was pregnant and we were uh, going through the whole pregnancy process and um, it's a weird thing to go through. I mean, anything medical was weird during the kind of height of COVID and it still is, you know, challenging at times. And so going through that process was um, not, not easy. And we had had some kind of challenging um, interactions there with the healthcare system that really sort of turned us off and made us start exploring some other options. 
um, I started listening to more podcasts, which seems to be like the impetus to a lot of this. Like I should really, that should be a very scary thing for her, her to say, or hear me say, oh, I started listening to this podcast, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> which probably means I have another scheme coming we're, up here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Zach's listening to something here tomorrow. We're going to have to change everything around. Yeah. Who knows what adventure we're about to embark on. Though. And so I was listening to a podcast and I actually was not seeking these out. I, there were topics we're normally dealing with finance, but they had kind of an off episode where they talked about giving birth abroad and um, they ended up talking about having birth in Mexico. And it was really fascinating. Um, I, like most Americans, had a very kind of weird impression, and not a very accurate impression of what the Mexican healthcare system looks like. And so listening to that, they had a tremendously positive experience. And um, I went and started seeking out more information about it, other podcasts, other resources. And um, it seemed pretty, pretty clear to me that that was a really viable option for a lot of reasons. It was affordable, the care was really good, we were going to be going to Mexico anyways, and there were certain documentation sort of advantages that came with that. And so I pitched the idea to her and um, she was really receptive to it actually. What, what did you think when I came to you with this next scheme? <laughs> I just, I guess I just knew after having had a baby already that I trusted my body a lot and I would be able to handle it. The benefits of it were worth it. We'd make it work. <laughs> so we decided we were going to do that. We got in touch with the birth center in Guadalajara and um, began the planning process through that. And it was around that time that I actually found a boat that really checked all of our boxes. We had a really um, positive impression of the boat. And it was up in this area. So we are on our way to look at a boat. This is the first time we've looked at a boat together. It's a Hylus 42? 47. 47, okay, that's not bad. It's fast, it's safe, it's large enough to accommodate our family, plus extra, so it checks a lot of our boxes. It'll just be a matter of the condition, can we afford it, and is this the route that we want to go? Right. We gotta get baby boy stops. <laughs> Where'd you find a spoon? He brought that with him. What do you think? Well, wow. okay, thanks for your input. Ultimately, it was out of our price range and the prospect of moving aboard up here, getting outfitted, and then sailing all the way down there for our first sail with young kids. We could do it, people do do it, but it seemed like a much more challenging prospect. You see her shaking her head, no. Um, <laughs> there, there's some getting uh, the crew aboard. <laughs> and, and really, that was part of the thing is if we're going to do this, we need to start it off right. And so uh, we ended up passing on that boat, despite it being a really good boat, and whoever got it, like, score for them. Um, so we kept looking. And so I finally found a boat that really seemed to check a lot of our um, boxes. And um, at that point, decided to get in contact with broker. Long story short, um, I went down and flew to Mexico to go look at it. And um, through that survey process, it was uh, quite an adventure. Um, we got to look at all the systems, check out everything we wanted on the boat. And it really seemed more and more clear that it had um, what we needed for a vessel. And, um, you know, really that should be a separate episode of its own. Um, but we had a really um, positive impression of it. It was really easy to work with um, the brokers and the surveyor. She was awesome. Um, and through that process, uh, we did discover some things that needed work, um, of course. But through the negotiation, we were able to get a price that made sense for us and the sellers. And um, we were able to be at the boat. And that was a huge change. It was a, such a, um, everything became much more immediate. Everything became much more real. It's, it's one thing to plan for this. It's one thing to make, you know, sell your possessions. But once you start um, spending a significant amount of money you know, on an actual physical boat in the location that you're gonna go sailing, uh, suddenly everything really crystallizes and becomes much more real. So that was a huge score. Um, you know, I've continued boat shopping because why not? And I really feel like we got the best deal um, that we could have gotten. And it's the best boat that I've seen in that area um, that suited our needs. So it was absolutely what we needed. Even though you know we got it a lot earlier on in the search than um, we thought we may have. So, you know, then it sat there for quite a while before we were ready to use it, which has its own problems with any sailboat. We've been paying double rent for a little while. Yep, not the best financial option, but we got a, such a good deal on the boat, it was worthwhile and yeah, securing that has been has been good. Yeah, for so long we've just wanted to find answers to so many questions, so it's really nice to know. Like, one of the issues or challenges we're going to have on that boat is that it doesn't have a ton of storage space and we're going to be packing it pretty tight with all of us on there, so we're going to have to really make good choices around what we bring. Alright, so you're probably wondering at this point, what boat did we get? We haven't said yet, um, but... So we got a Catalina 42. 
we had already been sailing the Catalina 22, and the Catalina 42 is really like the larger big sister um, version of this boat. And so going from um, a relatively small boat to a relatively large boat in our experience, it made sense to Just keep- double. So we wanted something that was really familiar. We were gonna have to learn a lot about a whole bunch of new systems, and you know, ideally the sailing characteristics were not one of them. Of course it is a different boat and it will have different sailing characteristics, but this is much more familiar than if we had changed to like a catch rigged boat or something that was just really outside of our experience. And one of the factors that led to our decision was that it was a three cabin layout boat. And with us and the kids, Crystal aboard, we really needed to have a lot of living space that um, influenced our decision to go that direction. Yeah, having the three cabins was essential. I think even with three, we're gonna have to do some juggling to figure out where the babies are gonna sleep and how we can all get enough sleep. Because even on land, getting enough sleep with two babies is a challenge at times. And so, yeah, Coffee having for a them, reason. having them share a room will it'll be interesting times. There were trade-offs involved, and of course there's no perfect boat. If we were gonna be going, um, we knew we were gonna circumnavigate, we were gonna go around the Horn and take on, take on some much more challenging northern latitude sailing, then we would have gone with a different boat. But for our purposes as a young family going to be sailing, you know, pretty conservatively, something that had a lot of comfort on anchor was really important for us. No boat is perfect, so. Yep, so this is, uh, you know, our compromises that we had to make, everyone has to make their own choices as far as what is most important for them. Um, having taken the boat on sea trial, and sailing a little bit since. I'm very pleased with the sailing characteristics. This boat sails awesome. Um, I really think we're gonna have a great time with that. Um, there are some things that we're gonna have to figure out as far as the layout and how we move around each other and everything, but I think it just suits our needs so, so well. So it was around July that I got the boat, got through all the contract. Um, we managed to secure it, gain possession. It was awesome. It was such a relief to have that. Um, and then really we had to kind of put a pause on that whole adventure because she was coming up uh, due in October and we needed to go to Mexico. And so we had a whole nother kind of a side trip to plan. And so at the end of August, we flew down to Mexico. Uh, we went to Puerto Vallarta to begin with. We had the birth center that we were working with and that whole process was quite the adventure um, we really had a great experience um, it wasn't it was better than we expected in a lot of ways i think that's generally what we would say um, yeah it's funny telling friends and family and stuff our story is so complicated that they would get all confused and be like are you gonna give birth on the boat? Are you coming back? Are you and we're yeah. like, no, it's a totally separate thing. We're just going to birth a baby in Mexico and then come back and then go to the boat. Yeah, there were a lot <laughs> Didn't of Didn't even see pieces. the boat. I haven't even seen the boat yet. But that whole experience was really, really great. Um, our daughter was born healthy. Kate is such a rock star when it comes to um, just giving birth and having the like, I don't know, it's, it's an amazing experience to behold and she does such a great job with it and so we could go great into the experience. details with that in another video. If you're interested in that, comment below because um, you know there are a lot of people who had a lot of questions and it's kind of hard to find information about it. After our daughter Istria was born, uh, that whole uh, that began a whole other problem uh, process to solve. So when you're dealing with two different governments and birth abroad and COVID makes everything impossible to get through bureaucracy, it was a paperwork documentation nightmare. And then you add in the fact that uh, we don't speak Spanish and um, there's you know a whole Spanish speaking government to contend with. It, it was really, really challenging. And for a while it was looking like we may have been stuck in Mexico indefinitely because our daughter had no travel documents. She had no documents. Um, uh, so it was a lot to sort out. Fortunately, Fortunately, we had some really good contacts down there that we made. Um, I was on the phone a lot and um, kind of barged my way through some uh, steps to make sure that we got what we needed. Um, it, was, it was really challenging. And One of his mottos through our entire marriage is, there's wiggle room. 
There's always a way to <laughs> figure things out. So. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, that's and a good And he is strong-willed. <laughs> Yeah, she, she knows. So with that, we were finally able to get the documents we needed. It was a whole pain in the butt. That could be its own, you know, whole long hours discussion. But we were able to get back to the United States in time for our son's birthday and the rest of the holiday season. So uh, that's where we're at. We've been spending a ton of time with family. We've been trying to get everything sorted out um, when it comes to some of our other affairs and documents. The biggest thing is, is there were some findings during the survey where we needed to get boat work done um, before we were comfortable moving aboard and sailing the vessel with the family. If it was just the two of us, we probably just would have moved down there, um, done the work ourselves and learned the boat that way. But having two kids in tow, living in a boat yard is not a tenable option for us. And so- Speaking of, one of them is calling my name. Yeah, so. <laughs> Nap times, we can get a lot done. <laughs> we ended up needing to get it moved to about 100, 120 miles roughly um, to another boat yard where they could do some of the advanced work at some better prices and it was better cruising ground for us to start with anyways. In the next episode, we're gonna be talking about what it took to get uh, the boat moved. So I flew down to Mexico, we did a 120 mile sail. Um, it was a great experience. Some stuff went wrong that we didn't expect that made it a little bit more challenging than anticipated. But stay tuned for that video. Um, like and subscribe when you do that. It helps us out so much. So thank you for doing that. Um, we'll see you on the next episode. Here's Little Miss waking up. <laughs> you gonna be a little sailor girl? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really is a good layout for um, living at anchor, being able to really enjoy the boat. If we were planning on... <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 <laughs>